Welcome back. It is Friday night, which means it is time to introduce you to our New Yorker of the Week. Tonight, we honor a woman who's been sharing a childhood passion with others, free of charge, for almost half a century. Take a look. This is New Yorker of the Week. Sewing a bag, knitting a sweater, fixing a hem. Ruth Taub has loved all of it since she was a child growing up in Manhattan during the 1930s. I just sewed and sewed and sewed to this day. And any problem I have, if I sit down at the sewing machine, it evaporates. I still do all my own clothes and I do alteration for my family. Ruthie, how many sisters should I... It's a skill Ruth has shared with others for almost 50 years at the Henry Street Settlement. She's the director of the home planning workshop at the social service agency on the Lower East Side. I was told about um, sewing and crocheting here from my mother. Ruth taught her how to sew maternity clothes when she was pregnant with my sister and I. So one way or the other, you'll be doing that stitch because she's going to show you. She's a tough cookie, but she's a good cookie. <laughs> I love Ruth. She's very good. Very good, and at 90 years old, still very active. Twice a week, Ruth teaches dozens of adults and seniors to patch up pieces or make clothing from scratch, all for free. My life is here. It's my home away from home. And these people are my friends, and I'm their friend. And it isn't just sewing and knitting and crochet. It's the way people get together here and the way they feel for one another. And that's what keeps her students coming back. I love coming down here, and they lift my spirits whenever I'm down. So I really like it over here. It's really fun. Talking with all the ladies. She does so much more than teach people how to sew. She gives people a place to be, a sense of confidence, uh, information, and really empowers them to not only impact their family, but their own individual lives in a really special way. Yeah. A life lesson Ruth learned decades ago. And so, for weaving together practical lessons with a stitch of friendship, Ruth Taub is our New Yorker of the Week. Beautiful. And joining us now in the studio is our New Yorker of the Week, Ruth Tao. Ruth, thank you so much for coming in. It's a cold night, and you're here to tell your story, and we really appreciate it. It's a very cold night, but I feel very warm being here, and, and it's so exciting. I, I just cannot tell you how excited I am. Well, we're thrilled to have you here. Uh, I've sewn some holes in my clothing over the course <laughs> of my lifetime, uh, but that's pretty much it. What am I missing? In what way? It, there, there is some great joy that, that sewing brings to you. Uh, to me. Yeah, so yes. what am I missing by somebody who does not know how to do it? I don't know, because some people think sewing is the worst torture. <laughs> I have a girlfriend, Phyllis. If she has to sew a button on her husband's coat, it, it's the, uh, the, the worst time of her life. So what's good for one may not be good for me. Why is it good for you? For me, from when I was a tiny little girl, it, it was something I loved doing, and not, well, not just now, all the time, I could be upset and unhappy and really in trouble. And yet I sit down at that sewing machine, it all ends for me. And it's still this way after all these years. In fact, just this morning, I was a little bit edgy. I sat down and fix something and everything evaporated I was fine I was able to just go on it just takes you to a calm place yeah. and you just do your thing it's just it's just my, my place it's a place for me what's your specialty my specialty is well I, I, I make all my own clothes and I do alteration for the family but my specialty is going into Henry Street and working the four hours. I used to work full time, but of course, different things, different happenings. I work two afternoons a week, but I love Tuesdays and Wednesdays. I look forward to Tuesdays and Wednesdays, and it's my lifeline. It's my reason for being well and taking care of myself, and, and um, I, it's, it's my life. The Henry Street Settlement yes. uh, looks like you have a family there, oh, in a sense. Friends, friends, friends. 
so many friends, like my life is Henry Street Settlement. Tell us more about the, the organization itself. Uh, I know it well. My father was born on Mott and Grand in uh, 1933. Uh, he would tell stories about the neighborhood, and of course I've been down there many times as a New Yorker. Um, so give us a sense for what the Henry Street Settlement means, uh, not just to you, but to New York City. I will talk about the people who come to Henry Street. I, let me talk about the women who come to Henry Street. They love it. These are, a lot of them are senior citizens. They really are lonely and don't have too many places to go. And just like I look forward to Tuesday and Wednesday, they look forward to Tuesday and Wednesday. And I try my best to be there every Tuesday and Wednesday. And, um, but I have friends from before this when I was full-time worker at Henry Street, when I was director of the whole home planning workshop, where we had a tremendous wood shop, we had a big shoe repair shop where people came in and repaired their shoes, doing soles and heels and taps and whatever had to be done. And we charged so nominally. If I paid 15 cents for the taps, the person who was putting on taps paid 15 cents. We made no money on the deal. A man could come in and do soles and heels and taps. I think it would be $3, hmm. three fifty. Then we had a TV shop, and that was very popular because at that time, you could repair your own TV. Sure. And we had a wonderful teacher, and he had some helpers. And we had people come in and repair their TV sets for what, if they needed a tube, that's what it cost, a tube. If they needed mechanical work, the teacher did that. So sometimes for eight or 10 bucks, they had a, a wonderful repair. Yeah, it's an old school New York. I had an uncle who had a uh, shop. Of, he used to fix uh, watches on the Bowery, yeah. uh, and it's turned into a, a jeweler. It's still there on the Bowery. Okay. Uh, it's just a, where exactly did you grow up in New York City? You were all, you've been down on the Lower East Side been, always. Um, I was born at Jewish maternity. Mm -hmm. That hospital was on East Broadway. It's gone. You would never know there's right. a hospital there. There's a big, a big, big building right. there instead. And um, I lived on Avenue D as a little girl. I went to PS 15. And then we moved to East 5th Street. And now I live in Seward since 1960. Where did you go to high school? I went to Seward Park. To Seward Park. Guess who went to, high, guess who went to Seward Park? You, My dad. Oh, your dad went yeah. to Seward Park. See that? OK. It's a small city sometimes. Yes. And, um, and, and now I live in Seward Park and in the, in the housing. And I, I love it. And I would never think of moving elsewhere. My family lives in Westchester. I visit. I'm going to visit them tomorrow. I go to Grand Central, and I'm there in no time. But I come home Sunday night. Neighborhood's changed over the oh, years. It's changed so. You know, from one week to the next, it changes. There's one store. A, a brand new store just came to East Broadway, Mission Chinese. They were on uh, Orchard Street a few weeks ago. I mean, it means nothing to them to move from Orchard Street to East Broadway. And the lines to go in there, you have to wait on line for like two hours to get in there. What's changed the most about uh, the people of New York and just New York in general uh, over your 90 years here in our uh, Let city? me just say, I'll tell you about the people who live in my building. When I moved in to the Seward Park Co-op, um, there I would say that 90% were Jewish people. Now, I would say it's the other way around. 10% and 90% other. It's a changing city. And that the Lower East Side has really been the gateway for a lot of these changes yeah, over, over the history of our city. Uh, Ruth, I can talk to you for hours, um, but we're running out of time. We only have about a minute to go. Okay. Um, and I want to ask you some advice. I haven't said this on the air yet, 
but I'm about to be a father again for the second time. Oh, my The second Christ. son is due uh, next month, uh, and I want some advice from you. Yeah. Uh, what's the best way to raise my second child? Give me some advice. You've done such a wonderful job. But I only have one child. Well, you've done a wonderful job as a human being to be sitting here uh, at the age of 90. I want to make sure I'm doing things right. Love. Just love and care. But if you have to be strict, be strict. Because I have seven great-grandkids, and I expect them to live up to the things that I expect of them. And in fact, my oldest great-granddaughter was just accepted to Princeton early admissions. Congratulations. So we're all very thrilled. Ruth Taub, our New Yorker of the Week, uh, thank you so much for coming in, for sharing your stories, and for doing what you've been doing at the Henry Street Settlement uh, for 50 years. Really wonderful to have you here. And thank you for having me, and I hope it turned out well. It, I think it did. Turned out just wonderfully. Thank yeah, you, Ruth. Good. Great to have you here. For more information about Ruth's planning workshop, you can go online to henrystreet.org. And if you know someone who would make a good New Yorker of the Week, it better be as good as Ruth, you can email us at nyer at ny1.com or write to us at 75 9th Avenue, 6th Floor, New York, New York, 10011. That's all the time we have for now. I'm John Shumo, and I'll talk with you Monday.